I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator bless. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. On one of the invites to a family for dinner, there's some who do invite me. <laughs> it was little Jimmy's turn to do the prayer before the meal. And so everybody bowed their head. And Jimmy is praying, thank you, God, for my mommy, for my daddy, for my gerbil. And then he began to thank God for the food. Thank you for the turkey, the stuffing, the mashed potatoes, and the chocolate cake and ice cream. And then all of a sudden, there's a big pause. And everybody's wondering, what's going on? And little Jimmy raises his head and says, mommy. If I thank God for the broccoli, won't God know that I'm lying? <laughs> but isn't it like that in our own life, where we like to thank God for the chocolate cake and ice cream, but we do not like to thank God for the broccoli, the Brussels sprouts, the spinach, the collard greens, the bitter greens. And yet, if you think about it, you can ask any doctor, like we can ask Dr. Tim here, and he will tell you that those collard greens, the spinach, the Brussels sprouts, it's way better for you than the chocolate cake and ice cream. And obviously, we are experiencing a big epidemic in our country and in the Western world in a lot of ways where people prefer the chocolate cake and ice cream to the collard greens, the spinach, the Brussels sprouts. And hence, we have the results of that. The Bible says, if I thank God for the good things in life, should I also not thank God for the bad things? For there is nothing that happens in my life that isn't for my good. It's just my perception. Today we have Jesus presented to us as the Good Shepherd. And I wanted in particular to focus your image on my favorite image of the Good Shepherd. Let's look at the screen here that we have. It is Jesus the Good Shepherd. You see it? And the Good Shepherd is carrying the sheep on his shoulder. You see it? Yes. Now, 
Why is it that Jesus is presented as carrying the sheep on his shoulder? Well, in biblical times, the good shepherd, in biblical times, the good shepherd had his sheep and always there was a stray, one of the stray sheep. And as the stray sheep was getting away from him, he knew that this was super dangerous. Because as soon as the sheep got away from the shepherd, the wolves would devour it. The wolves or other wild animals would kill the sheep. So it was very dangerous for the sheep to get away from the shepherd. So what did the shepherd do? He, ta he takes the sheep, the wayward one, the stray, and breaks the legs of the stray sheep. Google this information, biblical times and shepherd, okay? Lest you think I'm making this up, okay? It's all on the internet. Did you all notice? He would break their legs and then he would put the sheep on his shoulder. So this is why the good shepherd image of Jesus, always the sheep are around, but one of them is on his shoulder because there is always the stray. There's always the stray sheep that needs to have their legs broken. And once the sheep would be carried on the shoulders of the good shepherd, the, the stray sheep would get used to the smell of the shepherd and to his voice. Remember, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice, they know me and they follow me and then that wayward stray sheep would never get away from the shepherd now you understand why you had your legs broken in this life because what is it that has brought the vast majority of you to church your good life no hmm? your problems your issues your divorce huh, has gotten you closer to God your sickness, hmm? your health issues, your depression or your anxiety or losing your job or a problem with your children or losing your loved one. Hmm? There's nothing that God permits in this life that isn't for our good. Hmm? So on this Good Shepherd Sunday, I am inviting all of us here to thank God for those times when we have had our legs broken. When you've had your legs broken many times. I wouldn't be the priest I am today. The human being I am today. If it wasn't for all those times in my life that I had had my legs broken. And that got me closer to God. In my own life. I thank God for all those experiences that I've had. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be the priest I am today if it wasn't for the immigrant experience, having to leave my homeland in Poland, coming here to the United States, living in a basement in Chicago, not having furniture, just what we found in the alley, Mm. Then my parents divorce. I thank God for all those. Why, why is it that I'm able to understand all of you the way I am? Because I've gone through so many experiences that have made me who I am. Mm. Do you understand? In your own life, you know, having to live in a communist country. Why is it that I'm so appreciative of living in the United States of America? And many of you are not. Because I know what it's like to live in another place. Under communism. Where we had to eat pig food. Mm -hmm. Why do you think I have so many intestinal issues? Because mm -hmm. there wasn't any food, especially during the winter. Mm -hmm. So all of those experiences, I could go down the, the, the line. All the stuff that has happened to me in the Roman Catholic Church and, and in the seminary and all of that, those have been 
very good experiences for me. Hmm? They just made me who I am. And they've gotten me closer to the shepherd. All of those experiences didn't get me away from God. They got me closer to him. So you need to thank God today. Thank him for your illness. People come to church and, you know, they want to talk about all their problems. Mm -hmm. Whoever comes to church talking about God. Who comes to church talking about Jesus? Hmm. Hardly anybody in my experience. Nobody comes in line and when people greet me or they come to me and they say, I want to talk to you about Jesus. Nobody does that. I want to talk to you about my problem, my divorce, the fact that I lost my husband, the fact that, you know, I've got cancer or I've got this or that. No, I've got this addiction. Nobody says, oh, why don't we talk about Jesus? Hmm? But it got you here whatever issue you've had. Hmm? Isn't that that old thing of, you know, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger in this life? Hmm? So now, are you beginning to get it a little bit? You know, it, it, it really got me when they were talking about changing the Our Father. That's how bad it is sometimes, you know, in certain religious people. I won't mention who they are want to change the words of Christ. And one of the things that we pray in the Our Father is, lead us not into temptation. What is the word temptation? Test. Look at the King James Version of the Bible and it has test in there. Okay, there's different translations. We pray by saying, lead us not into temptation. But really it's, lead us not to the test. Hmm? Who allows the tests in your life? Is it the devil? No! The devil has to play on God's playground. The devil cannot do anything without the permission of God. Whatever happens to you in this life is permitted by God. Hmm? For your own good. It's just the way you're seeing it hmm? in this life. God allows the tests in our life. We know that very well from the Bible. Peter, Jesus says, Satan has asked for you to sift you, to put you to the test. But when you come back, when you come back, Peter, you will come back stronger to strengthen your brothers. Who put Peter to the test? God, by allowing Satan to do what he did. Hmm? And then, there's a promise. When you come back, Peter, not if you come back, but when you come back. That's our life of faith. That it's not if we will come back from whatever situation we are facing, but when we come back. And when we do come back from whatever it is that we are facing, we come back stronger. Huh? That's faith. That you trust in the midst. Hopefully you're reading the Bible. You can... Uh, Job, chapter, chapter 1. The devil's there not doing anything, right? You know, and the devil's there not doing anything. And who points out Job to the devil? God. Hmm? But God also says, but you won't, you won't do him any harm. No harm shall come to my servant Job. That's where we have to trust in this life. It will, no. It will all, all be well because God is in my life and I will be okay. So I come to church to fill myself with that. Mm -hmm. That everything will be just fine in my life because God is with me. Mm -hmm. So it's all, it's all our perception about how we're looking at things. I hope that on this Good Shepherd Sunday, I in particular wanted, uh, I wish we had this image in church. This would be a nice picture. That wall over there is empty. That would be nice. <laughs> you know, with all these images that I like to get. I know these, okay, but this is, did you know about this? Yes. What I, who knew what I just said, okay. 
or just a couple of people. Well, that's amazing. That's great that I'm giving you some new info. That's awesome. That's great. Do you find this helpful? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, I want to give you some good news that you can use in your life. Hmm? And I will never forget. You know that I spent... I, one of the reasons why I'm so grateful that I live in the United States of America is because I've lived in many places around the world. And I've been to many places around the world. And I know what I have. Hmm? Many Americans they just love to complain. Hmm? Try living in Russia, huh? if you don't like it here. Huh? Hmm? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> and when I lived in Oaxaca, in, which is in the mountains, it's one of the most impoverished states in Mexico. A lot of people are illiterate, they don't read or write, they don't even speak Spanish, they speak their own dialect. That particular dialect was Zapotec. Okay, and I walk into a home. They didn't have any floor. There was no floor in the house. There was no electricity, no running water, no bathrooms. And the lady made some tortillas for us with some beans to eat. We ate it. And then she looks at me and, and she says, Father, I just have one request of you. She says, pray for all the poor people in the world. Because we, thanks be to God, are not poor. We are so blessed. Huh? We are so blessed. Look, we have a we have a, a home to live in. We have a roof over our heads. We we have food. My kids haven't lost their life going to the United States. They're here with me. I am so blessed. Huh? Particularly on a day like Mother's Day, you know, this is something for us to reflect on. Because a lot of us can be very good at complaining about the moms we've had, or the parents we've had, or the siblings we've had, or maybe now even, you know, the, the, the children you have, or the spouse you have, or the country you have. Huh? What about thinking, thank you, Lord, that I do have them? Because hmm? above all, when we come to Mass, we have to have that attitude of gratitude in our life. Hmm? Not seeing what I don't have, but seeing what I do have and being thankful. Huh? Now, if she can say that, if she can say that, in the circumstances that she's living in, I think we can all say the battery is low. <laughs> <laughs>